Okay, going live in five, four, three, two, one, and we're live. What are you doing here, Hankin? How's it going, man? <laughs> How you doing, Hankin? Long time no see. Kid, <laughs> long time no see. We're starting this whole thing over. <laughs> now it's fixed. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank the makers. Yeah, so, um, man... So I got this new show here for the night crew. Mm -hmm. uh, what who, who what is your role on the night crew? What is it? What is it that you do for the night crew? Um, I'm in charge of marketing actually. Um, basically, right now, uh, all I take care of is uh tw Twitter, Facebook, um, getting messages out, uh, getting more involvement, and people brought into the night crew community. Um, you know, the role is ever changing and developing. Such is the night crew team. Um, but that's all I've been doing so far. Um, I know you work on the website. Um, I've just been focusing on getting posts out, getting people to talk to us, uh, getting more people involved into the night crew. Um, you know, I possibly want to start talking about getting guests on, but I think that's more of a Buster's role. But it's been pretty fun. Yeah, you know? that's true. She does a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But some people like my uh, tweets. I started doing Talk About a Tuesday, Taco What's About that? a Tuesday. What? Tell us more um, about that. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's still an early segment. Uh, every Tuesday, I kind of want to have a post out there that talks about something Star Citizen. I mean, maybe we can even start doing more out of Star Citizen community. Uh, but, you know, my last two were talking about uh, the P-72, which we just got the Emerald version of, uh, the Star Runner. Uh, just kind of getting people's feedback. What's their favorite ship? You know, what do they like about the ship? What do they hate about the ship? You know, just, just to get a discussion flow going. Um, little things like that. Not, nothing too crazy. It's funny that you still, gotta, uh, it's, it sounds like you're going to other gaming communities and just encouraging Star Citizen. That's yes. I mean, I'm Star guilty Citizen of that life, okay. too. I mean, I'm in Minecraft right now a lot and all I'm doing is working on building that hall E. Have you seen that? You're building a Minecraft hall E? Yeah, man. It, it's it's massive. Do you have any? Uh, roll the clip. Uh, I don't have any clips of it. Ah, oh. That's so funny because other people are asking me for that as well. I have no evidence. You just have to see it on stream. Do you, do you play Minecraft? No, people have been trying to get me to play. Um, the get closest into it. game get I played to that, and that's what everyone says. But I, I did Terraria, I did Ark, and then I don't know. I just never wanted to play that style. I even did Seven Days to Die with a couple friends, but um, maybe one day, maybe I'll get this crazy hankering to play Minecraft. But I swear, I haven't it's touched like, it. It's like meditative, man. You'll just sit there and you'll just be cracking away at a, a rock. One after another, and it's like you just breathe and sit there and go away. <laughs> and it's hyper addictive because you never know what's on the other side, like the next block. It's like, oh, the next yeah. block could be diamonds. So I'm just going to keep going until eventually I get that diamond. So, if and then anything, you hit lava. I, eventually, like, I'm just trying to rope you into another addictive kind of consumable. That's all. You oh, man, me. this is bringing me back to my wow days. Even now, it's like you can mine a star citizen. Like, I get all the relaxation, serenity kind of out of this game, right? You, you crank up the music, you turn on sound effects, and just go mining. And it's it's really, really soothing. Do you do a lot you know, of even mining? Even if you're just flying through. What, yeah. What, what type um, of gameplay do you usually do nine times out of ten? Well, that's kind of tough to say. Like, um, Kind of like the cut was black. I'm a jack of all trades. You know, sometimes I get a hankering for PvP. Sometimes I mine. Sometimes I FPS mine. Sometimes I do a uh, cave. You know, literally anything in this game, I want to have my fingers in. Um, I don't want to master anything. You know, I, I'd rather just be able to do everything okay than one thing amazingly. You know, I even like cargo running, you know. I haven't done it lately because uh, I I kind of get a feel of the server. And when I know there's kind of like a 30k rich environment, kind of like we've been experiencing the last couple days, uh, you know, getting closer to the PTU patch, um, I don't risk it. Not anymore. That's a young man's game, you know, going all in on a 30k prone server. I get that. If you're calling me young, then I'll accept that compliment. So thank you for that. Um, uh, you're very welcome. How do you like streaming and doing mining? Or or how do you how do you balance that? You know what I mean? You know how you ever do mining and it's like really boring and it's like, oh, there's nothing behind this rock. Well, not necessarily, right? People watching you mine might be a little bored with that type of gameplay, but it's not about them watching you mine. It's about you interacting with your audience while you're mining, you know. Go into F four mode while you're flying to a rock, you know, give them some shots, talk about what you're doing, what you're looking for. Um, you know, nobody wants to just sit there and watch you play quietly as you crack open a rock and listen to the mining laser charge up. You know, it's it's about how you present your content. You know, nine times out of ten, I mean, I'm just an F4 mode moving the camera around the ship. You know, 
but no matter what I'm doing, mine, mining can be fun. You know, you teach people how to do stuff, what you're looking for, uh, where the good spots are, what, you know, different planet. Like I've gone to uh, different moons like Aberdeen. And people are like, where is this? I'm like, you haven't been to Aberdeen. And, you know, how long have you played this game? You know, some people don't get to see these planets because 90% of what they do is, you know, either do the specific trade route they do from Galog or, you know, do the jump town runs or their specific missions. Like I have a friend that only does a 90J missions. That's all he's done since he's gotten the game. That's all he wants to do. And then, you know, I'll show him Microtech and he's like, we have a planet like this? And I was like, yeah. So I feel like it's my job to show you guys everything we have to offer with Star Citizen. The galactic tour guide. I like that. Exactly. Yeah. Is there anything? Take you my hand. Welcome to the internet. Is there anything you wouldn't do in Star Citizen on a stream? Like, is do you just find it just doesn't work? Um, that's kind of a tough one. Um, I guess when I stream, I do tend to go more towards multi multi crew ships, right? Like, I like using a prospector, um, but I have a mole, so I rather get chat engaged and playing with me and going around the ship. And you know, a lot of people that I play uh, from Twitch only have Mustangs or Titans or uh, Cutlass and. You know, they don't go into the the rabbit hole that is purchasing a fleet or an armada. Um, so I try to give them an opportunity to play. But, you know, I, I have done solo sessions. You know, we've done the zero to hero, um, you know, using like an Aurora, building up the parts. But, you know, it's, it's never been too tough. And I guess the only thing I wouldn't necessarily do on stream is some pirate stuff, you know, like. Not that I want to show myself off as a good guy, but I'm not going to be like, hey, hey, let's torpedo some cargo runners on on Twitch, like that's not what I'm about, you know. I don't even do that most of the time regularly. I definitely don't want it, you know, recorded. Of course not. I Although some, some other people do, you know, some people do. I just got to take a moment and say, holy crap, Nerd Show Chell just raided us with 166 people, and now I don't. Nerd really Show and Tow. Know what to do about that? Thank you so much, Nerd Show and Tow, for that raid. That's incredible. So, uh, hey guys, welcome to the late night crew show. It's Papa. It's Papa. Papa Nerd Show and Tow. Got uh, Mr. Hank in here with me. We're just having a nice little chat up in the uh, 890 jump above our corp, Barry 18. How would you stream today, Nerd Show and Tell? Good, good for you to be here. Yeah. Uh, if you guys wanted to ask Hank any questions here, just type them in chat. And uh, he's here just chilling. Just chilling like Now, here's the, here's the thing. So I will never mine on a stream when I know Nerd Show and Tell is on the server, unless I'm using his prospector or mole. Uh, yeah. That is something I have learned from my uh, years of experience playing Star Citizen. Is he like an intimidating force to be reckoned with, to not be reckoned with when it comes to mining? Um, I, I fell down the stairs. I hit a doorknob. He's never killed me. Never killed you before? Not once? That could be a challenge. No, it wasn't him. It wasn't him. It wasn't him. All right. Well, that's good. Well, what, what else do you got? What, like, what, what's, what's been 3.8 been like for you? I mean, it must have been dramatic. You, you realize 3.8 came out just after citizen con right so think back back in like late december when we first got it what, what yeah what's the roller coaster ride that you went on if you think about well that? no i've honestly liked the patch um a lot of people complain about some things but you know i always find something to do in star citizen when they completely remove gameplay loops that is when i'd complain you know but you know when mining didn't work i just didn't mine when uh fps missions didn't work i just did an fps you know there's there's other gameplay loops that keep me interested uh playing star citizen um, now there, I have been experiencing a few more bugs lately, but that's kind of expected when we get close to getting a, uh, first wave PTU patch, you know, like for instance, like guns have been disappearing, but all that's taught me is, you know, don't equip my own weapons, go to bunkers, pick up a bunch of guns and then use AI guns. Problem solved. You know, there's, there's, there's ways to fix what's happening. You know, workarounds always keep me, uh, entertained. What's the, uh, what, when you said a gameplay loop is removed, what were you referring to when you said that? Like, all right, so for instance, remember uh, when mining was a little broken and, you know, we have a decent between rocks being underground or you pop a rock open, it goes invisible. So you cannot mine efficiently. So that removes a part of the game. You know, it's a gameplay loop, something you can do in Star Citizen. Um, this beginning of this patch and um, I think it was like 3 and 3 and 2 uh, AIs had that big desync where you, you go down and shoot them. But on your screen, they're standing here, but on someone else's screen, they're standing somewhere else. So it was inefficient to do FPS missions. So that removed a gameplay loop. But again, there's other things to do. You know, you can do boxes. You can go around, kill people. You can go exploring. You could do uh, cave missions, FPS mining. There's always something to do. 
But it really but interesting how, um, you know, you're completely different from me. I had no idea, actually, before this conversation. Like, because I only do one thing on my stream, same thing every day. I didn't realize there was mm-hmm. a bunch of other people who, who pretty much do that. I thought everyone kind of does a whole uh, gamut of things. No, like, like I said, jack of all trade, master of none. I am literally a living Cutlass Black. I like putting my hands into every single thing in the game. <laughs> and not necessarily, again, because I want to be the best miner or the best cargo hauler. But, you know, as a streamer, I feel like it is my responsibility to answer questions for new people, right? And I want to be able to cover every single ground. You know, I've taught probably six or seven people uh, how to play this game in the past, like, six months. And, um, you know, when they give me a question I don't know or don't know how to answer, I feel like someone eventually is going to ask that again. And I'd rather figure out how to do it so I'm not giving them fluff. You know, I'm giving them real-life experience in the game of how to do stuff. No, I, I get you there. Yeah. How how has your streaming been? I remember when, like, didn't you quit your job back in like November and you said I'm going full time in, o- in October? Yeah, yeah, October. yes, I did. Yeah, what was that like? You survived, I guess. Um, I did survive. It was a definitely a crazy change. Um, you know, going from working in an office and then streaming to just kind of waking up and streaming all the time. Uh, but I liked it. You know, um, ended up moving, which kind of affected my streaming um capabilities because uh. When I moved down to the city, everyone told me we have fiber laid down. And when I got here, there's like three or four pockets of neighborhoods that have fiber. So uh, I couldn't stream for like a whole month. And that really, really hit my community hard. You know, I went from having like 300 average subs to, you know, I'm barely teeter-tottering 50-60. But, you know, I don't blame them. Like, I'm a TV show that went off the air. And now I'm like, I'm kind of back, you know. So like, even though right now, like, you guys can't see in the background because we have a green screen. I mean, we are on the E90. But I'm streaming out of my friend's guest room, you know. She's the only one of my friends that has a good internet signal. And she's like, test out my, my internet. If you can stream here, do it. And I was like, you are amazing. So is it crazy? just getting back into it. Isn't it crazy? We live in 2020 and we have unreliable internet like this. I mean, I get there's like a, a global a, a pandemic happening right now. But at the same time, holy moly, who just thought our infrastructure was as weak as it was? You know? Yeah. Well, that well, that's the thing. Um play computer games and online like i can play at my apartment where i live but i cannot stream you know especially uh, if you want to do like 10 80 60 frames um you're gonna need at least a 6k bit rate so that's a six upload uh with let's say another two for sound so you need at least eight upload to stream the quality i want to do right now the house i was at where i'm living has an upload of two and that's the best that that place has the download's fine i can play video games no problem but i cannot you know maintain a stream it's kind of first world problem, I would say. A, you know, a little problem. crazy. Yeah, first world. Oh, I cannot host a stable connection for my video. Well, I mean, it's kind of a living for you. If you're talking about 300 subs, I mean, you know, if you went to go live in a more affordable country, then you could probably do just fine on something like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, even here in the States, I could, I could probably move out to like Ohio or Arkansas or somewhere out where it's, you know, not super expensive. But um, it's hard for me to leave Florida, you know. I'm sure people who live in Cali would probably say the same thing. You know, the weather is just, it's too nice. You know, in the wintertime, I get to go jet skiing while other people uh, have to shovel their driveways and have their face hurt. It's interesting. I didn't, that's the first time I, I've heard you say that you're from Florida. So that's mm-hmm. cool. I love, did you know Florida is like my second home? Have I told you that before? No, you have not. Man, I feel like I tell everybody that, but yeah. Uh, Cocoa Beach. Well, come down for a bar citizen. Place. Where's the bar citizen? And like, where would you go for Orlando, that? Tampa. I I did my first one. Uh. I think it was in November, um, and it was the first time I got to go into a place where everyone's talking Star Citizen, which to me blew my mind because my room cool for feeling? friends, yeah, it's such a good feeling. All we wanted to talk about was ships and gameplay. You know, when I go out with my normal friends, I'm like, hey, we got a hammerhead, and they're like, can you stop talking about your video game? Like the people, they don't get it. You know, to have birds of a feather or like minds in the same room, like drinking beers, like this was the coolest thing I've ever done. You know. Every one of them was nice. Lieutenant Dan, most of you probably know him, uh, was uh, in charge of that. I got to meet him. Great guy. You know, it was cool. It got me excited for CitizenCon. I actually wanted to do it this year. So fingers crossed that it happened. Yeah, fingers crossed for sure. Um, yeah, I honestly, the first time that I was around those people before, it was a real changer. And like I tell people this, I'm like, if you go to CitizenCon, it'll change your life. You'll never look at things quite the same again. I don't really know what it is either. It's, there's just this weird aura it's you know it's more than just a bunch of nerds having like the same 
interests because it's almost a way of life. Like we are the most patient people on the planet. And I realized this after uh, the whole Final Fantasy VII thing. And I'm like, just let Final Fantasy go longer. Give it a couple more years. And then every Final Fantasy player was like, no, we need it right now. <laughs> like, those are rookie numbers. <laughs> yeah. They don't um, know the, tr- the struggle that is Star Citizen. No, I know, right? Yeah, but no, you're, you're still dealing with a lot of internet, internet problems. And I am surprised to mm-hmm. hear about that. Um, what do you think? Like, I got to say, what do you think about Starlink? Do you know what Starlink is? Have you heard of that? Uh, is that the satellite internet? Yeah, yeah. I think that this is going to fix all of our problems. I would I would love if it works, you know, but it depends on the speed. That's that's the biggest thing for me. You know, how how can you a a signal be a hard line? You know, like look at the way we have land right now. You know, Wi Fi will never ever be a uh, Ethernet port. So they they'd have to do something crazy to have that signal send efficiently enough. You know, and then what what happens when we have cloud coverage? I mean, I don't know if any of you ever had direct TV. Anytime it got cloudy, you can't watch television. That's true. Yeah. You no. Know? Man, I totally again, forgot that, about that, that. That was old satellite tech. You know, maybe this is some crazy, you know, laser beam that's going down into a freaking laser beam receiver. I don't know. I don't want to get technical because I can't, but I'm sure that hopefully people are using satellite dishes. I'm sure people still use direct TV though. Like that just seems like one of those technologies that wouldn't go anywhere. I mean, I'm sure there's people yeah, that are still like, like Seattle or Florida in the summer and you'll never be able to watch TV. Like the funniest thing I remember growing up. Uh, with direct tv is anytime it rains you can go inside and watch tv because if it's not raining you have to go outside and play but if it's raining and you go inside and watch tv you can't watch tv because it's raining That's and direct true. tv won't get a signal so it's like i ended up having to you know not that it was bad play video games and back when i was a kid uh there was no playing online you know it was like playstation one days it's funny it it's, it's, al- it's almost counterproductive. I never realized that. But yeah, we wouldn't have been able to watch TV. All we could do is basically play video games And if it was raining too hard out. I'm going to call this the first world problem show after realizing that. <laughs> you know, It's our satellite TV's not working. We have to play video games. <laughs> My television from space won't go through the cloud cover. What's wrong with this stuff? Because our area is too hydrated. Yeah. There was, a, there was a question in chat here. It asked, when is 3.9 going to come out? Uh, one hour is usually the response to that question. But, um, you know, I honestly expected Friday. And uh, it's not here. Today. But, yeah, today. And it's not here. So, honestly, the safest bet, and this is just a guessing. All anyone can do is guess is it's going to come out next Friday. Next Friday. Friday after you know, Friday. That's the first wave. Friday after Friday. We're just going to get next uh, first wave then. They're going to give this the weekend a test. But who knows? Maybe Monday comes and they're like, screw it. Here is the uh, first wave. Maybe it's Wednesday. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe it's the Friday after next Friday. I don't work at CIG. I don't know. I think no we should one can start... give you an accurate guess. Like, I think we should start a betting pool to see uh, who can come away the most accurate. You know, Name the date of the patch release. Maybe, I'm surprised that doesn't already exist. I mean, we already Down have to this... the hour. We already have Star Citizen Bingo. How is it we don't have the uh, patch release guessing day? Well, that's like um, when people do the, uh, not the fantasy drafts or whatever, the brackets where people put money down in certain brackets. Yeah. I don't know how it works. Out. Yeah. But that, do that for Star Citizen. What is 3.9 now? I got 50 bucks on next Friday, 2 p.m. You know. I've been running it. I, I What was it? Almost a month ago, maybe. I said April 17th is when it will come out to live. And I'm standing by that. I feel pretty good about that guess. What makes you pick that day? Well, uh, so I came to that decision when they originally said, oh, it's going to be delayed. I'm like, oh, it's so surprising to hear that it's going to be delayed. Usually, like, they're at least a week late. They're usually a week late. So if they're actually delayed, it must be two weeks or more. That's how I came to that. And it's always a Friday, right? It's usually a Friday. I've seen a couple midweek patches, but with something this scale, I'm I'm almost guaranteeing Friday. Because they're, what they're going to do is let First Wave have it, and then just let the servers do their thing for the weekend, and then Monday just go through the crash reports. Like, yeah, back you're when talking, I worked in software, that's honestly what we did. <laughs> you're talking <laughs> PTU for that? You would think, yeah, PTU First Wave. You, w- you would think that they would push something out Monday. That way they could see people use it and blah, blah, blah. But I'm sure what they want to do is just... Let everyone try it out for a weekend, collect the crash reports, and then make a decision on whether they're going to uh, you know, keep it uh, going or pull it back. All we can do is guess. All we can do is uh, yeah. pray to the star citizen gods. 
but uh, yeah, I guess we're pretty excited about that. Everyone's pretty nervous. Yeah, three nine, three nine's gonna be a game changer. Like what? I, it's gonna be a game changer. Game changer. Like, listen, we're getting so many new things being put into the game. Where you know, think about the other patches, mining. That's gonna add gameplay loops, but it's not a game changer, right? It's still Star Citizen. Now you're talking. We're getting in uh, weather effects where you can't go on certain planets. Like before, people could run on Daymar. You know, you, if you have fifty oxy pens, you could run the length of the planet. You know, now you're gonna have to worry about temperature. You have to worry about food and uh, eat, um, uh, hydration. Even a prison system now. You know, we finally have something for uh, people with crime stat. You know, there's no longer a uh, oops, I'll just backspace and respawn on my ship, no problem, or I'll self-destruct my ship. Now, people who do crimes are gonna have to do something about it. You know, again, that is a gameplay loop, but it's a game changer. It's gonna change the way Star Citizen flows. You know how I would like to talk about Star Citizen flowing? I would like to talk about how sad we are that the Idris is no longer on the roadmap. That's how I yes, would like they, to... Yes, they did push it to 4.0, but I will say this, and I always say this, I'd rather them push than release early and be horrible. You know, how much more mad would you have been if we got the Idris mission, you and your friends go to do it, and it just doesn't shoot or move? That's no fun. I don't want my first experience with the Idris being that. I'd rather wait you know, a little bit longer and then get this crazy battle, you know, that you're gonna have to pull in all these other people and utilize all these different ship functionalities, like better, uh, better late than never. I think that's a saying. It's a very censored response, but I, I understand where you're coming from. So, uh, it's a good attitude towards it. Um, no ISC this week, quite surprising, but I mean, I guess that's the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, they made pretty good videos versus, uh, you know, not having the the live show. I like their video on New Babbage where they talk about the attachments like that. That, to me, was one of the most mind-blowing things. You know, we're finally moving away uh, from using the Moby Glass, which, in a sense, is a, a crippling feature inside Star Citizen. You're in a firefight, you know, let's say you were using a silenced weapon, you get caught, and you just take that off and put on a uh, compensator. You know, before you you take out your arm and now you're immobile to anyone shooting you. You know, even getting out of the Moby Glass isn't always uh, the easiest thing. So I think it's sweet that they're moving away from that and giving us this in-game functionality where you can, you know, cancel the menu and go straight to your gun instead of fighting with your uh, iPhone, Apple Watch, you know. I think it's so strange that uh, you there's a like a general sentiment that we're going to lose the Moby glass. Um, but I think it's funny because, um, when Todd Pappy was on star citizen live, he'd said that, uh, the payment will be able to pay players by using the Moby glass. So I guess well, I, I don't ahead. think, okay, let me uh, rephrase. I don't think we're getting rid of the Moby. We're reducing the amount of tasks we have to do through the Moby, right? Like you shouldn't always have to, uh, require to use your hand. Now I'm sure with the addition of these menus, you can still go into your Moby Glass. You know, if you're in a safe spot on your ship or whatever, you can do the same exact stuff. But I think it's cool that they're giving us multiple ways of accessing the same thing, right? Like a, a shortcut, if you will, to add attachments, you know, add a magazine, change your ammo types, take off your helmet. You know, you're you're not going to be focused now on using your freaking hand. Did you, see, that, you know, did you see the original Crisis UI that had the similar interface to that? Did you see that before? No. It was yeah, floating okay. around Reddit. Urgh! If you Roll give me a couple clip. minutes, I'll, uh, if you give me a couple minutes, I'll try and look it up at the old uh, Crisis One interface. But uh, you're excited about that? You think that'll be a good improvement for the game? Yeah, I think it's a nice little change. Um, you no, know, hell, e equipping medi pens. I think it shouldn't require you to open up your hand, be locked in a position to do something like add med pens to yourself it'd be sweet if you can go up to a station and use that inner thought bubble and be like give me more pens and bam bam there they go yeah you know? i agree this the point of this game eventually is to you know basically be a space sim you know i find it ridiculous that you have to go to your watch to pick something off and put, uh, pick something up and put it on your body you know? i agree i 100 percent agree with you okay i'm gonna try something new here i'm gonna try and Do put uh, an image of the interface on the screen um You'll have to look at the Twitch. If you have Twitch open, you have to look at it through there. Okay, here it goes. There it is. Nice. That worked. I'm so happy. Okay, cool. So if I click on this button here, somehow, no, that doesn't, no, that's just a horrible image. What if I just do open image here? 
Oh, I don't know how to Firefox very very well apparently. But I mean, we can kind of see. Yeah, it is. Kind of see a little bit. Almost spot this on. Is awful. Why is this Pinterest? Star Citizen a new crisis? Well, I mean, you know, it's built off the same technology, so I don't see why not. View image. Here we go. This is it. This is how we do it. So yeah, Crisis One, very similar interface. But you think this is a model for success? Do you know any other games that use something similar to this? Um. I don't remember if uh, Division One was kind of like that, but nothing, nothing else has been this intricate. Um, I've never even played Crisis. I just know that that's the game people will be like, "Oh, I have a new PC. Does it run Crisis?" You know that that old meme. I've I've never really remember playing a game that has a interactive thing like that. I can't yeah. think of it at least. And I wonder how like Call of Duty and Battlefield do that as well. Do they have gun? I mean, I I. I know you can modify your weapon before you go into a match and maybe at like a ammunition crate or something. Again, I haven't played Call of Duty in a hot minute. So maybe if that's a new thing they added in, I'm not sure. But you know, back from when I remember playing, it was always, uh, you know, you finished the round, then you can go and alter your gun. Then you go into the match with specific loadouts, but, you know, you can't change what's on the gun. Arc and Atlas. I don't remember Arc having uh, in-game attachments like that. I always thought you had to pull it up on the uh, menu. But again, that could have changed after a couple patches. Last time I played Ark was uh, uh, after we got Primitive Plus, which wasn't even a major patch. It was like a small mod you could add on. I'm trying to find this now for Ark and Atlas, just just for my own curiosity, just kind of comparing it here. Yeah, I never played Atlas either. Um, I, Again, I was a big Ark fan, but I waited to get Atlas, and I saw the reviews people were giving it, and... It was not good. It was surprising, hey? I remember um, a bunch of my friends got into a group and uh, to fight the Kraken. They, someone was telling me on Twitch, and they're like, uh, we got together all these people, and then the devs got mad at them for having so many people living on one island to do this. And it's like, wouldn't you have congratulated them for actually getting people together in your community to play the game versus berating them for playing? Like, yeah. So, kind of lost respect for uh, those devs. Yeah, the game industry is the the a weird place. I'm just learning that as the days go by. Yep. Have you? But that's the good thing about Star Citizen, man. Like they really listened to the community. You know, they wanted to push out hover mode, and I mean, I'm, I miss it. I'm not gonna lie, but you know, that's a good example of the mass majority doesn't like a feature, and you know, they they take it back to work on it instead of being like, "All right, screw you guys, this is in." You know, they give people an opportunity. How long did you play? Like, uh, how long? Yeah. When did you start into Star Citizen, actually? Um, it was about March of 2018. And um, I had a couple friends tell me to start playing Star Citizen, blah, blah, blah. Because, uh, you know, I, I used to play a wide variety of games. And, and um, it was like Star Wars Battlefront is when I started really getting into uh, space flight. I played flight simulators and Ace Combat and all that. And I always like flying. Um, but, you know, Star Citizen Battlefront... Is what I was like, holy crap, I love space battles, blah, blah, blah. I kind of missed the one from Xbox, if you guys remember, where you could like uh, t fight in space, but instead of fighting outside of the ship, you could also take a bunch of troopers inside and blow it up from the inside out. And that is like a itch I've been, you know, like chasing for all these years. And then Star Wars Battlefront 2 came out with a new version and it was nowhere near as good as the previous one. And then someone's like, oh yeah, play Star Citizen. We're going to have all this stuff, you know. And I tried it out and I instantly fell in love. You know, I played with an Aurora uh, for about six months before I finally got a new ship. And I did everything in that game. And this was back before uh, chat was open all the time. And you have to like manually open it up each time. So I spent six months in the game, not even talking to people. I used flashlight and crouch to communicate. <laughs> like my experience was crazy. You know, I used to do jump town runs with a three SCU in the Aurora. The good old days. Yeah, I remember three. Uh, I remember twenty eighteen. That probably would have been around three point two. I'm guessing is that just around there? Yeah, yeah, three point two. Launching uh, missiles used to freeze everyone playing on the same server, even if you're on a different planet. That was like, do you remember there? That was like the Cry Astro. What do we call it? The Cry Astro Armada. Yeah, we had Cry Astro, Cry Astro, Drum Town. Um, what else was? That's just about it. Yeah, this was before we even had Hurston. I remember when. Uh, they were first talking about bringing out Hurston. I was one of the first people on the planet using half jumps to get there. Oh, yeah. Um, it was crazy, yeah. <laughs> you have to log out on your ship to get your quantum fuel back, and 
I remember all these times trying to touch down on a planet, and as soon as you'd go down before, under, under 200 meters, your ship would blow up. I, I literally watched Stanton develop. You know, not as much as most people who have played way longer than me. You know, back in the days of uh, just having a hangar, but it's it's been sweet watching this uh, solar system become what it is. And hell, we're about to get pyro. You know. Yeah, soon TM we're gonna get pyro. You know, I don't soon like TM. I don't like to stress the whole um, who's been playing longer game. Uh, because I value everybody, like everyone has their own opinion about when they started, you know, like I love listening to the stories of people from 3.6. Yeah. You know, they say different things than the people from 3.1 and the people from 2. I don't know, 2.3, whenever the good flight model was before 2.6, there was a really Mm -hmm. good flight model. I think it was 2.3, you know, they have their own opinions about it. So, you know, I don't think it should be devalued just because of that. It should be cherished, man. You got a great perspective. Of course, of course. I was just but, saying, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, I'm one of the the founding fathers, you know, when <laughs> people have been playing since before they even had hangers, you know, when all you had was your Aurora in your My Hanger page on the website, you know. I just don't want to take anything away from them, that's all. And I'm so glad for those people who have the gold cards or whatever they joined. Uh, like, golden tickets, right? They golden ticket, yeah. They started in yeah. like 2011, 2012. Maybe next time, guys. <laughs> Star Citizen 2. Super yeah, CM. there you go. The sequel. So, Hankin, what can you tell me about the Scarlet Order? Have you heard of or heard of the Scarlet Order before? Oh, you're talking about my organization. Yeah. What is well, it? Well, the Scarlet Order, aka Scored, is my awesome Star Citizen uh, organization. Um, they it's got, found me. It's got 212 members in. Are you yes, kidding me? We, we we've been growing like crazy. Um, back when I started, we were probably at like 70, and um, the guy who taught me how to play, his name was Pilgrim, and we started at Orc together. Uh, with like five or six of us and um scored was trying to get me for a while you know blah 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 and then eventually these people just stopped playing or disappeared and i was like you know what i'm gonna try the scarlet order and literally they became my family um we don't only play star citizen anymore um the amount of time i spent with them we're, we're on grand theft auto we have people playing uh dcs um all these different games and it was kind of cool because out of star citizen i almost got a like a new family in a way, you know, not to be all cheesy or anything like that, but you know, I I like hanging out with my scored brothers and playing games more than I do with some of my real life friends. You know, it's it's kind of weird, the kind of bond bondmanship you make uh, from stuff like this, you know. And all we do is play Star Citizen. Like, yeah, always they... have someone from multi crew, and you know, it's cool having you know. When we had Jump Town, it was sweet. Be like, hey guys, somebody just blew me up. I need a couple fighters to pop on and. You know, we ended up getting like 30 people into the server and, you know, people were like, oh, I got me and my six guys. We'll take you guys out. And then we come in like a freaking swarm like and cool. Yo, and you got you got Spazzy McGee on there. You got Archers on there. I'm so shocked to see Archer on there. You got Monty the Meat Missile on there. Jay Calvin's on there. Jesus. Old like, boy. This is like the leave extraordinary gentleman or something like that. Right. Yeah. It's it's a good community of people. I remember, uh, you know, finding Archer back back in the uh, when he was an artist formerly known as uh, Cupcakes. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, we, we were talking about medical gameplay, and you know, he'd hang out with us all the time, and like we we pull in all these great people. I'm mean, like even Raven Queen, who's like one of the biggest Star Citizen supporters on Twitch. Uh, most of you guys will probably know her. I uh, ended up joining Score too. Like, we're literally a family. It's it's crazy. And we don't go too hard into it. You know, we. I know some wars are like, be here at seven oh seven hundred, and I need 12 Gladius scalps, you know? Like, we don't have any crazy rules. Just go in there and have fun, and you know, don't be an a-hole. It's the biggest thing. So who is the founder of it, did you say? Um, actually, Winteridge. Uh, Winteridge Actual on Twitch is his name, but um, he's the one that brought me in. Him and a couple other people made the organization, and it actually started, um, I believe, from uh, Star Wars The Old Republic uh, is where the org was founded from. And then it just kind of moved over into Star Citizen and been a member ever since. There it, was it, even a point where uh, I was one of the... Um, so our org is separated into three houses. Well, now four. It used to be uh, Lucrum, which is my house. It's about trading and industry, just anything money-related. We have Nyeth for uh, science exploration, medical. And then we have a Nandy, which are like our security guys that shoot and make things more deader. And uh, we just recently introduced House Commons uh, for people who aren't ready to select a house that don't really want to be uh, into a specialized role, you know. But uh, I was in charge of Lucrum for a while. 
Um, this was back around Jumptown days. I used to run about five or six caterpillars. I'd pull them all out, let people fly them. I'd go into Jumptown and then have people just come and land, not even get out of the ship. I'd fill them up and have them leave. Like we had very efficient uh, money making skills. Yeah, I don't doubt it. With all this this roster of people on here, yeah, it's crazy. What what yeah, other games? Of people. What other games did you say that these guys play as well? Um, right now it's primarily um DCS, Star Citizen, Minecraft, which I know you just got a little bit excited for. A little bit. Um, we've done uh Red 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 Dead Redemption, Grand Theft Auto Five. We did uh, Seven Days to Die. You know, just kind of introduce people to games. They they even had a Magic the Gathering thing where nice. there's at least. 10 of us uh, always playing that game. Oh, that's nice. And uh, yeah, Magic the Gathering. I bet that must be good for building like community as well. Oh, of course. And I know some you know, guy- We brought in people too that have never played Star Citizen. Um, you know, on Free Fly weekends especially. My favorite thing was I got about four people playing on Free Fly. I showed them a couple things, you know, like FPS mining, blah, blah, blah. And then I haven't heard from them. And like a week ago, they're like, hey, I just bought the game with your referral code, can you teach me how to play? And I'm like, absolutely, freaking lutely you know, the people we've brought in that uh, were playing, uh, you know, not Star Citizen. So it's kind of it's kind of cool reach, branching out into other games and then having people come back and liking this one, you know. Does... Some people do have a, a, a niche gameplay style, right? Like a lot of my friends love, um, what's that, League of Legends everyone plays? Yeah. Those type of games. And to get them off of that is like pooling teeth. Oh, you know? yeah, like, it won't happen. Won't happen. I even did Heroes. I was like, guys, look, here's a new one that's kind of like this. And they're like, don't talk to me about that game. I was like, oh, sorry. Sorry. I feel the same way whenever I go in public and I talk to another gamer and I talk about Star Citizen. You know, they're just rolling their eyes. It's like, oh, here we go. Another Star Citizen yep. person. <laughs> that's why it's a big deal whenever we go to a party citizen or whatever, or citizen con. It's like, oh, finally, yeah. somebody understands. You know, I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand why all the gamer other games... Game companies, game communities are are not feeling us or something. We're just too much, I suppose. We're dialed up to people 11. People are too afraid, but they'll see. Like, I, It's more of a... I feel like people are too nervous to jump in because it's a lot of controls. Like One of my real-life friends who is still trying to learn the game, um, the first hour of me teaching him, he had like backed up from his computer. He's like, I need a break. This is so much to take in at one point. And I'm like, you know, you're right. I need to slow it down. I feel bad. You know, there, There's so many things to learn not just flying a ship it's you know just walking around and interacting with the world is uh something they got to get used to you know that, but yeah. it, it kind of plays back to what i was talking about before about how like you get somebody who just joined in 3.6 yeah. 3.5 um just to hear like how accessible the game is to them and how easy they're able to pick it up uh because that's something i kind of worry about you know i i often say it took me two weeks to learn how to fly my ship in Star Citizen, like two and weeks. Then you learn pretty quick. And then nowadays, yeah, it's Are you yeah, you, flying like not crashing or flying like you can effectively survive against nurse show and tell. It's complicated because, like, just consider the fact that I just do cargo right now. And just imagine that my skills are developed or specialized for flying cargo. So, like, not that level of fidelity in flying. I would say just yeah. so I'm not running into well, stuff anymore. Well, you're going to big ships. Yeah. You know? so, but not that level. Just where I'm at, where I'm not running into stuff anymore, I would say that took two weeks. Like, a good, solid two weeks where I'm not running into stuff anymore. Yeah, that's pretty fair. But nowadays, I don't feel like it's like that. Like, I think... Or maybe it is. I don't know. Like, I'd like to talk well, to younger people and get their opinion. Without hover mode, I think the skill curve is a little easier. Like learning to fly is not too bad. Um, you know, getting people used to uh, flying coupled and decoupled and, you know, applying uh, certain speeds at certain points. It, it, it's just getting used to it. Like, you know, think about putting a person into a car for the first time. Like no one drives well their first time. I've never met someone, you know, especially uh, I have a stick shift car and I've taught a couple of friends how to drive that. Not a single person was like good in their first day. You know, it's, all about the feeling. I mean, that's what we are as, as humans. You know, we got to get used to something. It's muscle uh, memory, repetition. You know, that's how we learn things. No one just gets on here and f- flies right off the back. You know, unless you obviously played other space sims before and you're used to that type of, you know, flying. But you know, even the biggest thing for me is I come from uh, flight simulators. Uh, you know, the the rolling, um, on the like on a hotos is different because before on a plane you bank to turn. You know, versus this one having a a roll instead of a turn on a hotel stick. 
and that you know like left left on in space is left instead of rolling left that drives me bananas i'm so used to that because i i mm-hmm. started in in-flight sims as well and uh, i still do it just naturally and it feels good you know i go into a bank and i'm making a turn 100 percent unnecessary but mm-hmm. you know it just you get used to it so wait so we got a little bit of a connected history if we both got into flight simulator what what fs did you start playing in uh, it was micro microsoft flight simulator uh i fell in love with it this is back in the the old days like the graphics were nowhere near as good but it was cool because everything in the plane was like it was in the real world and i have a couple friends who fly uh decathlons and a couple cessnas and uh before i went flying with them i'd practice in those planes and i got in there i started turning the plane on he's like how do you know how to do this and i was like video games (laughs) right because crazy to me like i played a game and i learned a skill like i literally was able to take off and fly the plane now landing I i was like hell no i'm not putting this plane down but taking off and going like Everything I needed came from a game I played, you know, I, was, I probably spent 15 hours in the decathlon and like five hours in the Cessna. And that's all it took. It's crazy, it's crazy. too. But like back in those, I don't know, back, like what years are you referring to when you say like Flight Sim? I, sw- um, I swear there's relevance behind I, I it. I think it's like two, 2009 is about when I started getting into a, a PC gaming more than a console gaming. You know, that's right around when I got out of high school and I was able to, uh, you know, get myself a computer because um, growing up, uh, I had a RIP C, but I was playing like Warcraft and all that nonsense, and uh, then moved to console because that's just what everyone was playing in those times, you know. I kind of played what the the mass was playing, just because you know I hated Call of Duty, but everyone was playing Call of Duty, so I wanted to play with my friends. And now I was like, screw it, I found Star Citizen. Now I don't care what my friends are playing; they can come play with me. So it's my turn. This is my time. So I think that would have been FSX. That's that's the one you would have played. That, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, we're in late 2000s. It's, it's, it's been a hot minute. Yeah, it's been a bit, but um, yeah, that's I. Well, so you fl- usually flew Cessnas, is that right? Cessna 172. Cessnas and Decathlon, uh, which is like a not exactly a stunt plane, but it's a little more, a um, little more oomph. Single engine, uh, double seater, uh, but you can do a couple more tricks with that airplane. I mean, I just keep... Cessna. Cessnas is the reason I did Cessnas was uh, every I wanted to be a pilot uh, growing up. Yeah, and um, everyone that had I knew that had a plane either had a decathlon or a Cessna, so that's why I practiced those airplanes. Just because I figured if I'm gonna go get tested out, I'd want to practice the plane I was using. That's cool. So, um, that's incredible, man. Um, we have such a similar life. That's so strange. I guess that's why we're kind of brother. We think in the same terms. Um, I'll tell you, I did. I got my flight training at my um flight like my pilot's license in 2006 i think and it did all of my training in microsoft flight simulator um and it was great up until the point where i had i was getting my exam done and i was doing my landing and my brain my brain switched over to video game mode and it just different it just i don't know how to explain it but there's no resets (laughs) yeah well that's true and i almost damaged i almost damaged the airplane too when i did that yeah hilarious landing i will say out of all Taking off and flying is like riding a bike or driving a car. It is so easy. But when you go to land, you're coming in at like 80 to 100 miles an hour. And you can already imagine how fast that is in a car. And that's like you're getting up to those speeds. This airplane is decelerating to these speeds as you're approaching, you know, a landmass. It's nerve wracking to say the least. You know, you're fighting that roller coaster feeling of, uh, you know, losing altitude. But at the same time, you're going in so fast, like... It's just, it's a practice thing, you know. Like the more you get used to it, the more it becomes second nature, muscle memory. But you know, the the first couple times landing, like, oh, it's it's scary when you have the controls. I'm not I'm not gonna lie, it for sure. And that's what I mean. Like I was so practiced with just doing it in a video game, and then mm-hmm. like you know everything responds differently. Like you really have to monitor your airspeed, and you know the airspeed in Microsoft Flight Simulator is different than it is in real life, right? Mm-hmm. So and it didn't help. You don't rem- feel it as much. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it didn't help my examiner. He was, he told me to, to overfly. There was a, there was a airplane at the end of the runway that was taking it, preparing to take off. And he wanted me to overfly that airplane and then take, like get off the taxiway after that. And which is something I've never done before. So I, you know, this is my exam. This is my final thing or whatever. And here he wanted me to fly over top of another airplane. God, it was the scariest thing to this day. I'm still talking about the damn thing. (laughs) Anyways. Um, so I guess that what 
like you're excited for the next Flight Simulator game, correct? Oh my God, yes. Have you seen it? Oh like, God, um, I'm so excited. Use, was it Google Earth or something? Yeah. It looks so good. It, you're literally flying over the world. Like, is it a Simulator X they're calling this one, right? The new one? I thought it was just Microsoft Flight Simulator. I, I don't know. I something after it. You, this... you might be right, but dude, it looks amazing. Like, compared to, like, even the last one they did, which I, you know, might be X now that I'm thinking about it. Um, that one didn't look too bad, but you could tell you're in a video game. This one, you could with VR goggles, I feel like you're going to be able to trick your mind into actually thinking you're flying. Like, it, it's real-life pictures of the ground, you know, coming at you. Like, that's that's cool to me. But technically, the last one would have been Microsoft Flight. Remember that? I think so. Hold on, let me just, I'm going to open up my Steam. It would have been, like, five years ago around there, but it, it wasn't very popular. And uh, I don't really know what happened to that, to be totally honest with you. Um, but I know that like all of the... people switched to DCS. Yeah, DCS got super popular. Yeah, I played um, one from 2016, uh, Simulator X was, I think, the last one I, I touched, which is all right. Nothing fancy. It wasn't a fancy game, really. I mean, it was pretty dated. Game. So for them to, to do as much as they're doing into it, it's man, it's so weird, too, because like Microsoft Flight Sim has this history of uh them kind of abandoning it abandoning it or just not putting mm -hmm. any attention to it they just they put out a release uh like flight sim 98 ha didn't really change from like flight sim 2002 then there was a yeah, little bit of improvement added a few more planes and a couple more interactive menus in the ship but not a lot of change to the gameplay you know what i think it was is they just made it compatible to the new direct x versions that's it and a new interface oh, that was probably about probably it. maybe a little about yeah, that would make sense in material polish here and there Adding new airplanes. Hey guys, I got a seven forty seven in now. Woo. <laughs> Give us another sixty dollars. Oh what yeah, that's what they back in the day. That's yeah. what that's what they should have done. Made us pay for air. I mean, I know that they had like third party providers making airplanes for them. Uh, but man, they should have taken the Star Citizen route. Just imagine how much Microsoft would have been through the roof. All right. Oh, you want the every anything after a Cessna? Yeah, it's about fifty dollars a ship. You know, I did um a Twitch. I did a 24 hour gaming marathon on Twitch about three or four years ago and it just flew around the world and I flew the Concorde within 24 hours. That's a hard airplane to fly, by the way. If you ever really feel risky about something, it's $150 yeah. to buy the airplane, but it is rock solid. Like there are these, um, they had these like tapes they used to use for GPS tracking. It was like, um, it's what the Apollo spacecraft used to use. It was um, inertial navigation system and it relied on these tapes the tapes had these timers on them and it would feed data or it would check data with the inertial this is all built into the the airplane by the way like completely yeah. so if you're doing a transatlantic flight you have to actually take the tape out replace it with the next tape that's just a part of flying the airplane that's crazy talk about t playing it for weeks to learn how to fly the damn thing too yeah how do I change the tape? <laughs> I know, right? It's like, good luck Googling that. It's the most random yeah. thing ever. Um, but yeah, the new Microsoft Flight Sim game. And there was a recent video that came out a couple days ago um, just about their multiplayer capability. Did you check that one out? Yeah. Mm -mm. That's That'd be kind of sweet. Yeah. Like, I've, I've never thought of those games. like So they're kind of going the route of DCS, you know, having the realistic uh, uh, flight, flight models, uh, vehicles. But to be able to play with your friend, that's going to be pretty sweet. I would love to take a AC-130, you know, with a couple of guys in it. It'd be kind you, of cool. Do you play, you, sorry, did you say you play DCS as well? No, I've uh, I've been watching a couple of my friends who play DCS. Uh, again, that's another game they've been trying to talk me into getting into. But I have this thing. I don't want to, like, overload myself on too many. Like, um, It's so easy, too. Yeah, no, and I'm, and I'm a completionist, which is a problem. Like, <laughs> right now I'm playing Sea of Thieves, and I have to get every achievement before I stop complete. Like, I don't want to play that game anymore, but I just want to finish it out completely. And even Grand Theft Auto, I was like, oh, I'm going to play for a little bit, go through the storyline, do some online. But now I'm going through all the missions and trying to get a gold uh, star and everything. I'm like, man, why do I do this to myself? Like, I give myself more enjoyment again, but it's like I get locked into having to finish these games before I add on new projects. So DCS will save for a rainy day. No, I understand that. And I mean, in my opinion, too, like it's hard to transition between Star Citizen and Flight Sim. Well, it, I don't mm -hmm. know if you're using dual joysticks or not or a host ass or uh, whatever. Throttle and stick. You're still using throttle. OK, maybe mm -hmm. that's not so bad. But man, I can't go back to using a throttle now. It's like I just want my dual joysticks for everything. 
Yeah, well, I'm thinking about getting the uh, Constellation Alpha and going to dual stick because I noticed when I dogfight on my Hotas, I end up using the uh, thumbsticks more than anything. Yeah. And then I only use the throttle when I'm flying bigger ships. So I want to keep the throttle um, for when I'm doing Caterpillar or, uh, you know, Kraken or something. But I want to keep the sticks just for combat. But it's funny because I talked on my stream about that and all these people were like, I thought about the same thing. And then you just end up using the sticks for everything. Totally. And you just end up having the throttle plugged in and not doing stuff and i'm like man you're right you're most likely right but i don't know something about using a throttle still it's just soothing you know it's when you're true. doing cargo runs and you know you accelerate like it'd be cool if i even had a rumble pack so you can kind of feel that the would engines, be so cool you know like <laughs> give us a little more immersion yeah i love that idea rumble pack it'd be a rumble pack in the throttle it'd be sweet like feeling the engine power up as you accelerate it Add it to the I list like of things we needed. We need for Star yeah. Citizen. <laughs> Soon <Perfect>. TM. <laughs> uh, no, I. You know the uh, the joysticks though. I really think they're just more accurate. And I I think about yeah. like all I do is fly caterpillars. And like I'm almost just grown myself into not using throttle anymore. It's like I'm almost lazy about it. I just use the cruise control when I need to go high speed. It's like okay, yeah. full throttle cruise. And then for everything else, I just strafe everywhere I go. It's just out of laziness, it I works. think. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Well, that's the way, honestly, the game is meant to be played. You know, you, I have only seen um, left hand stick, right hand mouse, uh, top dual sticks, you know, in terms of combat only. You know, you, the precision of the mouse uh, and then having the uh, the strafing on the left hand. Um, those people are tough to take down, uh, especially as a Hotos player. You know, again, I'm using my right hand stick, so I don't have as much accuracy as the mouse players, but. In terms of moving myself around, I'm using this tiny little C stick attached to this entire throttle system versus having my hand around the entire uh, control. You know, so I feel like you know using my thumb versus using my entire hand. It's a little more finite. Do Not you, using the, the stick. Do you think that we'll have those big fancy clouds that's in my, the new flight sim game? Do you think we'll have those in Star Citizen? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You're confident. hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent confident. I mean, they're already talking about cloud tech and uh, adding all that stuff in. Like we've seen Crusader itself change already with Planetech V4. It looks different. Now, how are you going to have a gas giant and not have realistic clouds? You know, the, the whole planet is made of them. You know, we, we've seen videos of them, uh, what, they, what they're planning on doing with cloud tech. And honestly, I think it's looking great. You know, the, the, we have those crazy nebulas. Like, uh, what was the one? The Nether, where you saw the lightning and uh, the stuff from the Squadron 42 video. You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about, and I can't remember it. It's the something. The pin? No. Yeah, maybe. I thought it was the Nether, but you might be right. It might be something else. Just It looks crazy. And The Nether's from you Minecraft. Know. You got Minecraft on the brain, man. I do have Minecraft on the brain. <laughs> yeah, now I can't remember what it's called. But, you know, I, I think we're going to get the realistic clouds. I mean... In a sense, we almost have them now, but you know, once you pass that cloud layer, you can see that it's this like one pixel long bubble around the planet. You now all they gotta do is give it a little more depth. It's gonna look good. I mean, I hell, do. even games like uh, Grand Theft Auto uh, already have a little bit of cloud tech. You know, they're just making their own version. What is? What do you think the future is of Grand Theft Auto? I kind of like look at Grand Theft Auto as a benchmark for online games. I mean. I don't know. I don't know the numbers in particular, but I think they have the largest online audience right now. Like I think their numbers have surpassed World of Warcraft. That's pretty important. Yeah, they, they, that game is just ridiculous and crazy. Like when I started playing, I was already like, "This game is nuts with what they let you do." I haven't played in like two years, and I just logged back in, and now you can have like an orbital cannon shoot people from space. Uh, like the, the crazy things they added into it, I just feel like it's becoming a uh, online sandbox of people doing whatever the hell they want in a FPS city. I think that's I'm Citizen's... honestly surprised that they have kept it going this long. Cause when did five come out? Like, wasn't that uh six, seven, eight years ago? Like maybe even longer. Yeah. It's been around for quite a bit. It's been around for quite a bit, you know? So I was kind of expecting like Grand Theft Auto six or them to bring out something new Grand Theft Auto VR, you know, but it's just, they keep pushing updates on online and yeah, they're all right. But you know, I, I don't know how long they're going to be able to keep up this uh, this community. You know, 
Yeah, at least they're not charging DLC. I will say that is the one thing I give Rockstar respect for. They did charge people for those shark cards to have in-game currency, but they never made people have to buy a DLC expansion. You know, we've gotten the new heist, the bunkers, uh, the casinos. All that stuff came free as long as you had the game. And then there's the hackers. Yeah, well, you mean when you say hackers, you mean the modders? Uh, yes, I mean the modders. Okay. You know. You go in there and suddenly you're teleported to the middle of the map and explode or pulled out of your car or they give you $33 trillion. So sometimes there's good and the bad. I don't know much about the modding community in Grand Theft Auto, to be honest. Like, is it like an organic? Like, do you know much about the modding community of Flight Simulator? Like, you know how there's whole corporations that all they do is just make airplanes? Like, and they no. sell them all. You, you never heard of that before? Mm-mm. Yeah, that's like no, I've I've heard people talk about modding games and you know uh even Gondora um from our night crew uh mod Star Citizen, you know, but I've never seen people who uh you know mod for the good because everyone at Grand Theft Auto, like ninety nine percent of the modders are just kids who found out how to do this, they get banned and ask their parents for another copy. Like it I don't think it's grown people doing this because all they're doing is being dicks in the game, you know. No, I see causing it's... people grief. Griefers. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I, the reason why I asked that was because um, I just wonder if like people are able to make money off of it. You know, that's one thing I like about Flight Simulator is the modding community is just they're like they're there to make money. They're selling airplanes. I think that's really cool. I wish that Kerbal was more like that. Minecraft yeah, is quite like that's that. Like the the good side of modding, right? They're not yeah. going in and being like, let's make your Cessna fly three thousand meters a second modding you know where you hit this button and you crash your airplane they're creating content i would think of it more of like community workshop versus modding you know because when i'm talking about grand theft auto modding i i legit just mean hacking these people are uh, accessing menus like mod menus they're not supposed to and not doing anything good out of it like i think one time i had somebody who created like an awesome weather system and it put us into this crazy death match which i wasn't down to play but it was ended up being really fun like he took game files and made a a custom match out of it but you know the rare time you see that versus the other 99 percent of the time where they just throw you into the ocean or explode you you know not even being next to you and then they're in god mode and you can't shoot them you know that's that's no fun okay fair enough so when you said hackers i shouldn't have assumed you meant modders and the modders with uh malicious intent i suppose yes mm, gotcha well that's really exciting dude so, uh, cool. Man, you got a lot of the go. You're a busy guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, we don't know about Citizen Con yet. Did you watch today's, uh, Star Citizen Live? I did, did not. Watch that one? Okay. Well, it was cool. They, uh, they, they made kind of like, um, um, a marketing poster, I suppose, for like the Aries Starship. Mm-hmm. So it was cool to see their process behind that, seeing some Photoshop sorcery. They got a really cool tool, actually, I'd never seen before. That they just bring in their 3D models and it just like bakes the lighting on it really quickly. So like just I think it's just any 3DS model, like 3DS Max model. They just bring in there and they can like do Photoshop layers and and export. That's like kind of that. cool. Yeah, I definitely got to check it out. Do you use a lot of Photoshop? Do you play with that stuff a lot? Um, no, I have like a introductory skill set for that stuff. Um, again, I I spent most of my life coding, and then anytime I needed something like that done, I ask someone else to do it and then I'd, in return I'd work on something like for them that they can't do. You know, so a uh, nice little community but never learned how to photoshop myself. I'm a uh, professional paint artist on what? Microsoft Paint. Oh, are you are you actually like you do pixel drawing? No. <laughs> I'm very bad. Um but funny enough like some of my own emotes actually came from paint. Like my 07 took me 3 hours. To <laughs> do. Like and then my friend's like, dude, I could do this in like seconds. And he showed me how he does it on like an illustrator and Photoshop. And I was like, that's beautiful. Now make me some more. <laughs> yeah. You know, man, people are so talented out there, especially that's one thing that's nice about Star Citizen. You really see those talented people. Um, yeah. Like uh, Cupcakes did my Caterpillar, the emoji that I have for my channel, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I went to school. Uh, I originally went to school for graphic design. So I learned all the Adobe programs at school. And like Cupcakes did or Archer did my app or uh, the emoji uh, in an illustrator and I'm like why the hell did you use illustrator for pixel drawing 
But like he did, oh, he did some sort of sorcery I've never seen before. It's like a, a pixel drawing that can scale infinitely, or it's a vectorized yeah. pixel drawing. I think is the best way to describe it. But man, these guys, you know, you get really good they're, at they're something. They're good. They're good. Yeah. Cupcakes, Cupcakes are. I'm sorry, Archer, Archer Design Co. Uh, <laughs> he's made a lot of Twitch community emotes. Like most people don't even know. Like, it'd be kind of cool if there was like a an artist recognition. Uh, for emotes, so yeah. them, like where it's from, like you can highlight over and see its history. Like, dude, nurse show and tell us a lot of his emotes are from cupcakes. Yours, um, you know, Monty, I think even has stuff from him. You know, a lot of people end up using archers because he does good work. You he know? does do good work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think he's underappreciated. He, I think he needs a little bit more credit. A hundred percent. Yeah. Get, you want to give him a shout out? We'll give him a little, little shout out in the chat. Yeah, for sure. Uh, are you going to do that? Yes. I got you. I got right, you. You got it. Yeah, Archer, if you're out there, man, we love you. You're great. Yeah. Well, we got a... By the way, we did have a uh, Squadron 42 update today. Was it today or was that yesterday? Oh, yeah. what was it? Well, actually, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention the whole Flat Earth thing. That was cool, hey? Planet oh, Tech uh, Planet V5. Tech V5? Yeah. <laughs> I got a chuckle out of it. Man, they're so... I, I felt like the internet was sad on April 1st because I think that like usually April 1st is like internet day. Mm-hmm. But we didn't have much fun on the internet on April 1st. Sadly. I mean, it, it's tough with what people could have joked with, you know, like it's a, it's a crazy time to be uh, living right now. Yeah, it's so, true. So uh, you have to kind of teeter totter around uh, what you could really joke with. Like I like theirs, you know, the Planetech V5 coming soon, you know, we're finally doing the way the planets are meant to look flat and i thought that was hilarious you know? <laughs> especially considering we have a flat herson society org in star citizen yeah, of course <laughs> yeah um within the uh, we got a newsletter today i don't know if you saw that are you excited for the star uh star shoot star runner are you excited for the star, star? runner yeah. oh my so many stars God. out there yes yes i Love that ship. I cannot wait to actually apply the advocacy skin on it. Like that sexy black and gold look. Oof. It's going to be beautiful. I'm hyped. That's more or less going to be my new daily driver. Well, you know, it's nothing crazy. It. And it's just, I, I like it. I like everything about it. Did you see uh, there is a post today or an email that went out today with the new concept of it? Did you see it? Mm-mm. You didn't? That's good. Because if you're enthusiastic about the ship, I'm going to show you it right now. I'm going to do the, show me. the content screen. You ready? Yes, sir. Hopefully this works. There we go. So that was today. That came out today. And something I noticed that changed in it is it's got like the satellite dish now. You see that? I th- they've had that on there before. Did they have that on before? I just yeah, didn't yeah. see that. Mm-hmm. I think it was in... Um... Uh, one of the kind of screenshots they made of it, of, you know, like the live trailer pictures. I don't know how to explain them. Like, of it in action. I've There's a... Because that's how you're supposed to intercept signals and uh, hack stuff. This is such the Millennium Falcon. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I'm a little bit jealous because I always thought the Caterpillar was the Millennium Falcon ship. I always flew the Caterpillar everywhere I went. But uh, clearly that's not the case. Um, what's this? Is this a turret up here? Is there a turret on here? Uh, I think see there's it? two turrets, right? Because uh, if you remember the lore post where it was um, the Bandu and the girl running away, uh, he was using the turrets, but with a remote remote access. That does not look like a remote turret to me. Does You see what I'm looking at right now, this thing here? Yeah, well, I think he specifically uh, uh, bladed, uh, bladed his. Oh, I see. Oh, that's cool, man. But yeah, I think there's a turret there, and I think there's one near the front as well. That would make sense. Like underneath somewhere. So so what is it about this ship that is going to make it your daily driver? Well, I really like drug running in this game. Oh. And um, I like, <laughs> I, it's, it's a fun aspect, you know. It's not that I always want to do it. it. It'd be sweet to have a ship that um, has the unscannable areas of the ship. You're going to be able to, um, you know, kind of move stuff around. Because, you know, when we get past the point where we're just getting sh- scanned by uh AIs and people start, you know, you're in our sector. We need to go through your ship. It'd be sweet to, you know, you do this little mini game of they're going to go and check over here, but you're running the box to this section. And then, you know, they're going to go over here. So you got to run the back box back over. It's got all these like Jeffrey tubes and uh, ways to move around the ship that I think is really awesome. You know, and like 40 SCU and it's got a good size on it. Um, I like it. I like the everything about the ship. It's just, and it looks so good. It does look good. I agree. It looks so good. Yeah, I'm curious to see what happens with that. 
Um, then again, I guess there's some contention as well, like them releasing a ship that doesn't have the related gameplay associated with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you know that that's happened. We have the Herald. You know, I mean, hell, even the Carrick is missing its uh, drone bay and uh, cartography room. And then don't even get me started on Reclaimer and Starfare. Starfare, you know? yeah, Starfare. So I mean, I'd, I'd rather them at least get these ships in the game so people can start testing things of what works, what doesn't work, uh, where there's shield holes, blah blah blah, and then work on functionality later. Like from their uh, last video, I saw well, not today, like a couple of days ago. Um. You know, even the graphics team, it's performance before um, uh, functionality, right? They're worried about making the game run as best as it can before they start fluffing up all these little things you can do. You know, like, who cares if you can go mining and um, eat and uh, salvage when you're crashing every five minutes, you know? I'd rather have a constant playable game with some stuff to do than a game with everything that you can't maintain a, a session on. What is your opinion about the Vulcan announcement they had last week? Did you catch that one? You're talking about the the yeah the um new that's the one I'm talking about the graphics changes they're doing um yeah performance uh, performance increases I, I'm excited you know I I know a lot of people were probably going to complain about the things he said but he's completely right you know we're going to have a revamp and a, rather than focus on revamping and getting things working properly then, you know, starting to fluff the game up with all these little things, you know, make the game run on other computers and run efficiently before making it enjoyable for, you know, the select few people who have a computer good enough to, you know, run the game as it's on its current state. So I ask you that because, you know, you said you did have a coder's background, so maybe you have yeah. some appreciation for the amount of work no, that's required. He's, he's 100 percent that. right. You know, and that's a, again, like it's one of my favorite things about Star Citizen is all these people who are backers who suddenly become professional coders and software developers. <laughs> it's like, you guys have never been in this world and seen what it's like. You know, they're like, why is this done and this not done? Like, sometimes when you're waiting on a project to be done from a different department, there is nothing you can do further to further your branch workflow other than work on something else. You know, like this cannot com be completed until you have, you know, A, B, and C done. You cannot move on to D. So, you know, go start Project H. Like, it's a different world there. Yeah, totally. And agree. code changes too. Like that's another thing. You can have something done and be ready, but you know, by the time they finish the thing, there's a new library out or a new API out. Like you know, things are constantly, constantly dynamic in the software world. And I think that's another uh, thing people don't realize with this game. You know, they make a tool, it starts working. They finally finish a, another thing for the game, and they start implementing that in. But bam, suddenly the new library doesn't support these old things we had working. So they have to go back. You know, it's like this. Take two steps back, one step forward, just to get things working right. Have you ever had the uh, occurrence where you would write something and then you'd come back to it maybe a year later and you're like, what the F What did I, I do? Thinking? Oh, my goodness. That happens <laughs> uh, almost daily. Like, uh, especially um, I started my software job in 2013 and um, I think I left it at the end of 2019, right? About six years. And uh, when I was starting to go through some of my old uh, code, I was like, what was I doing? doing like, right <laughs> i cannot believe this is how i wrote it but you know that's that's the beauty of software you know you get better each day you know you start learning new routes you know there's a thousand ways to skin a cat especially with code you know you could have 10 people who write software uh do 10 different things for the same exact job you know everyone has a different process of how they step through things and i think about like that effect i don't know if you could consider the programmer's dilemma i hear the word the phrase programmer's dilemma all the time but it refers to so many different things and I just imagine, you know, having that effect, like you're working on cry code or something, and then you're like looking at code you did a year ago. And I'm like, man, the amount of technical debt that must like incur to just, you know, learning basically. Yeah. Everything's outdated within a year. Ooh. <laughs> it's expensive. So they, yeah, they you, you never stop learning. That's that's one thing I will say about software is uh it's the ever going you're you're just in college the entire time. Like you never stop going to class every single day. Uh, you write something and there's always something new, new, new code, you know, like uh, when I started, all I knew was SQL, uh, basically. What? Started getting me, SQL? Yeah, That's SQL wild. SQL is, I know, I, I, I mean, I knew like a little bit of these other things, but then they got me under Ruby and Bash oh, scripting wow. nice. and Angular and all these things I had to learn on the go. There's some projects where I've only needed it for one thing and then <laughs> I never touched it again, but I had to learn all of it to get this to work right, which 
You know, it was crazy. And like, that's one of the things I hated too. You know, I'd, I'd spend uh, two months learning something, get a project done, and then I didn't need to touch it for a year and a half. And then suddenly a year and a half later, it's like, hey, this one other thing broke. You know, I hope you remember everything you learned from two years ago. I was like, oh my God, it was tough. They, uh, they, they want to get Vulcan in by the end of the year. That's their goal. I think that's possible. You think that's possible? Yeah, we're, we're still we're we're in like the first quarter of the year, right? Like we we've got plenty of time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. I th I think right now the biggest thing, like he says, we're waiting on Squadron, and I think a lot of their assets are pushed onto Squadron to make sure that's out, that's whatever, and then once that is good and rolling, I think we're gonna start getting a lot more dev uh, resources pushed towards uh, working on the lab servers, right? There's a lot of assets uh, from Squadron Forty Two are locked up and kept from uh, PU. Yeah, that's true. Secret projects. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, people were able to pull out the Idris, you know, months ago. You know, uh, a couple other ships, I think, like uh, Vultures in, um, uh, F-8 Lightning's in. Like, all these ships were there with interiors even, but they don't want them pushed out until everything else is finished off with their single player. And they need server meshing for some reason for Squadron. I can't figure that out. Yeah. Mm. Who knows? Again, we don't work there, you know, so we, we don't know what's yeah. uh, going on behind the scenes. We can just make our best guess. Yeah, and it's crazy because, like, of the developers I spoke to, it sounded like they didn't really know what was going on either. There's, like, m numerous levels of secrecy within CIG. Man, that's so fascinating. It's got to be so hard to manage as well. It's kind of like an art in itself. Yeah. And then creating a game like this revolutionary yep that's what we're, that's why we're here right so um what's what's your future look like what what like what have you done in the past 12 like what have you been up to in the past 12 months well honestly uh working on my stream um finally starting to get uh different scenes and all these effects going um you know from when i started like honestly i started streaming around august i did a little bit before that but august was my uh date where i just went full full ham onto it you know full paint and um then i noticed you know how different people do theirs and what i was missing on mine and people started making things for my stream so it, it's just you know a work in progress everlasting work in progress um keeping my uh fleet up to date so i have uh ships for everything you know when people log in i want to make sure they can experience the ships they want to fly uh i kept my fleet mostly to some of the intro ships you know like the gladius and arrow so when people get on they're like what is this ship like i'm like here test drive it you know instead of filling my uh fleet up with you know the kraken or star runner or idris you know ships that i'm not going to see for a while you know started focusing more towards my community on uh, making sure they're involved and in having a fun time watching me versus just them watching me do my own thing in a single seater you know but that that's just me so i wanted to do but again i started getting uh transitions scenes in which i kind of like uh Especially when I start playing other games, I got a like little splash screen with stuff in the background that uh, all my viewers made for me, uh, different emotes, stuff like that. But uh, in the next 12 months, I'd probably say I'm looking at getting a, a house or a definite place because like right now, you know, I'm in my best friend's guest room and I don't mind it, but I, I also feel bad because it's like not my space, you know, so I want to get into a place that's some good internet, my good internet. So you're going to get a house and this is just going to be your, your streaming hut? Basically, yep. yeah. well, my eventual goal, funny enough, is uh, I've been really into the tiny homes and I kind of want one. That's and, cool. Um, yeah. I've been watching them on YouTube and I saw one girl who's a streamer. She's like, oh, this is my stream tiny home. And I was like, this is pathetic. Like, no offense to her, but it's like she had like one tapered off green screen and like a little tiny computer. Like, I think I, I already saw, have. I think I saw that one. She was like German or something, right? Yep. 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 Yeah, I saw that one. That was and, good. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I want to build around this. You know, I have a standing desk, so I'm not have to worry about a chair or anything. You know, I can put this onto a corner and. No, but that that's beyond twelve month plan. You know, right now it's just getting into a my own zone. You know. Well, I think it's cool if you're motivated to like buy a house with your streaming as your full time job. Man, I hope that's yeah. a future we're entering because that would be an exciting future. And uh, I think that you're capable of doing it if you're targeting like if you're saying three hundred subs a month. That's it's pretty good. Do it good. Do it good. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> do it good. Especially when you do a tiny home. You got solar panels, you know, like totally. you're not paying for a lot of power. Like I'll have an internet bill and food bill, you know, that and maybe property tax, but you know, I don't need a four bedroom house. I don't need it. 
to Everything me, I need is on my uh, my beautiful standing desk. I thought it was so amazing that that woman could get by on her streaming stuff that she had. It really wasn't like, and mm-hmm. she's doing like console gaming. I don't know what game it looked like she was playing. I don't know if you remember what that was. I do not. They never showed it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they did. And she also had like an upstairs too. She was doing like video sessions or video interviews or something like that. So, oh, that Patreon account, huh? Yeah. Uh, you know, you know what though, man, it'd be just so cool to have just like a, a house of streamers. I had some friends that did that actually. They went to that would uh, be cool. Amsterdam. They're all a bunch of game developers. They all went on like this game retreat or game camp. It just, you know, there was a house that was owned and it was just all rented out by a group of game developers and they would just go there and they would contribute to the game and then they'd move along. They'd stay for a month or something and then go off and somebody else would take their spot. That'd be really cool though. Like if there was a dedicated, um, what do we call like studio or something like that? A stream house wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, everyone splits everything and then it'd be cool to have a fourth account where, um, you have like a 24 hour stream and people just go through shifts like, Hey, you know, wake up. This is your six hours. This is your six hours. This is your six hours. And then at the same time you could do your own. Like I've seen a fun house. It's like a group of people that play games together, but you know, they bought an office and they go into an office or whatever. Um, I wouldn't mind doing that either. Um, we actually talked about doing a, a tiny house community, you know, where we all split money on land and then just build all our tiny homes within like a, our own cul-de-sac basically. That's cool. Yeah, let's sign me up for that. Like, I just need an excuse to go to Florida. That's all. Don't yeah, worry. Let's about do the, it. Don't worry about the whole <laughs> virus and the customs and whatever. We don't need that. But <laughs> man, I love Florida so much. Did you say where you're at in Florida, or is that? Um, I was cause... in Tampa, and then I uh, moved down to Fort Myers. Oh, you're in Fort um, Myers. Fort Myers. Yeah, uh, this is actually where I grew up uh, in like middle school and high school. Um, I've always been west coast of Florida. I lived on east for a little bit. I even have a couple of friends in Daytona, but. I like the Gulf of Mexico. It's you no, know, I love Daytona and I like waves, but sometimes I just want to go in the water and not have to worry about riptide <laughs> sucking cool. you out to the ocean, you know. And I don't know, it's just it's nicer. It's nice and calm here. Cool, man. It gets a little uh, humid in the summertime, but you know, it's it's beautiful ninety nine percent of the year versus you know, if I want snow, I'll go snowboarding and then I'll come back and enjoy my warm weather. Where are you gonna go snowboarding? What would a person from Florida know about snowboarding? Oh my god, I've gone to Whistler. Oh, in, what? Uh, Canada. What? Yep. I've gone to Stowe in Vermont. I've gone to Breckenridge, A Basin, uh, Keystone in Colorado. And uh, then I was going to uh, ski Tatras. I'm Slovakian, so I have family back home. And uh, they have the high Tatra Mountains. And I was going to go boarding over there um, this year. But uh, obviously, coronavirus. Yes. Put a big old dampener on that. Big old dampener on that. But yeah. Just because I'm a Florida boy doesn't mean I don't know how to, you know, shred the gnar. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but it sounds wonderful. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, what s- snowboarders use what? what? That's a sh- snowboarder term. Yeah, yeah, it's called shredding a nar. What? What is a nar? Is it a person? Fresh pow pow, fresh laid snow. All right. You know, because some people ski and they go on like the Groom Mountains. Like I like it when it just snows and it's like nice and cushy, and you can hear that crinkle, and just you shred the nar. So is nar different than powder? Because I thought it was called powder. Oh, we call it pow pow. You know, there's, there's pow, pow. a lot of terminology for it. You know. So I understand yeah. <laughs> that that you gotta go. You're you're on the run. Did you have anything you wanted to say about the roadmap though? Because that was my next thing. I was gonna poke at you a little bit because they had the roadmap um, update today. Didn't actually see it. <laughs> I spent most of my day shopping for clothes for this show because I thought we were gonna do it in game and then, you know, made some dinner. Oh, yeah, but I, I have a lot that. of things to catch up on with Star Citizen. Yeah, well, Friday is the exciting day, and that's kind of why I poke at you in the first place. But mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. honestly, I don't think you you missed too much. There wasn't a lot of updates. What did they? I saw they pushed. Did they really push out uh, forty two, or was that an April Fool's joke too? Forty two. What? Squadron forty two. Somebody, uh, I saw a picture. Somebody said like uh, beta's coming out in twenty twenty two or something like that. Oh yeah, there was a Reddit post for that. Yeah, because they believe the roadmap. They're like, oh yeah, it's on the roadmap. You know, sometimes yeah, but that's, you can never a hundred percent trust the roadmap. Like I've I've seen things that are like ten out of fifty done, and then they push it out next patch. Like what? They didn't update this roadmap. You know, roadmap gives you like a what they want you to see, and half the time I feel like it's kind of like a thing to create hype. Like, um, you know, the Carrick when they're like this, this is how close it is to getting done. Blah blah blah. I bet you things were already beyond finished, and 
they were just ready to kind of, uh, you know, surprise everybody. And you do it all the time. Yeah. The roadmap is a, a rough estimate. It's like a, what, what do we want them to see? Yeah, that's true. Well, TLDR, uh, Esperia Prowler went to Polish State. They moved the M50 out of 3.9, brought into 4.0. Yeah, um, Prowler. They all... I, I'll wait for the M50. I yeah. want that Prowler. Yeah, the M50 is not a... You know what I was thinking about the other day was how this new Flight Simulator game, what the Red Bull Air Racing will be like, like if that could be an eSports from Microsoft. Wouldn't that be incredible? That would be awesome, actually. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Could do the freaking course, cause like air racing, it sucks. Like I mean, it's great, good and all, but it's super expensive. And I feel like the sport should be a lot popular than what it is. And I don't yeah. know, maybe we could just turn it into an esports, so it's a little bit more achievable. I'd like it when we have the VR goggles and like yeah. a suit that you can actually feel the G forces. Like yeah, that's the one thing. Um, in terms of driving and racing sims and flying sims, it's like I miss that feeling. I I like the the, the the pit, the little core in your stomach, you know what I mean? Like when you go up and down, like that to me is what makes flying and driving a fun experience. Like even drifting, like, yeah, you can drift in a video game. It's no big deal. But until you're in the car and you're sitting on the seat and you can feel the wheel in your hands and like, it, it's just a completely different experience. And we're getting close to simulating it, but there's a few key aspects missing, you know, especially yeah. on a plane. Like, think about how much different people would fly in Star Citizen when they're redding out, but you're actually getting close to redding out, like, with VR goggles, and you can feel it. Like, you know, people wouldn't do all these crazy things. Totally. Like, you know, I I, I want to go 0 to 1374 meters a second in two seconds. Like, no, you freaking don't. <laughs> like, you'll get there, then you'll wake up. Like, <laughs> Yeah, like, you ever see the G meter when you're doing a turn in Star Citizen, you hit mm -hmm. five Gs, and you're like, oh, that would be painful. No big deal. And then it goes up to 13, and you're like, I think I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like what? It's nine. It's like a high nine is like what uh, trained pilots can handle. Or something yeah, like that. something around there. Thirteen. Like yeah. you hit that turn and you're going to bed. Well, I I think it was sixteen. That guy who strapped himself to a rocket car in like the fifties or whatever and launched himself down a track and hit, I think he hit sixteen G's and he almost died from that. Geez. I could imagine. Yeah, that's obscene. Dang. So uh, just uh, the last thing on the roadmap was the, sp the refinery got added to the space station for 4.1. So now they have the cargo awesome. tanks in the refinery. And that's about it. I will man. say th that mixed with the, uh, what are we doing? Like the mining buffs. I think that is kind of cool. Like I, I get people getting kind of upset about them focusing so much on mining, but at least we're getting a refined and polished, you know, state of that to allow them to push that off and be like, all right, we're done. Here's the next step. And refinery, that's been a big thing. You know, the whole point of the prospector and the mole was to have all this SCU of cargo. But, you know, until you're a master miner and you know to only pull 100% rocks, you're filling a lot of inert material out. Like, it's going to be sweet to go in there and, you know, basically get more money for your minimalistic load, mining load. Of course, your mining load. What other kind of load did you be talking about? That's the only Thank one. You. Of course. We don't want to cause any explosions for a load either. We wouldn't want that to happen. No, insurance that's companies. Bad news. Insurance companies would be pretty upset over something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I mean, we can wrap that up here if you want to call it. Uh, did you have? I don't know. Is there anything that we might have missed? You think? No. I mean, other than let's get ready for three point nine and uh, you know, new Babbage. I'm excited for that zone. I'm excited for the new mission. Like, yeah, I get everyone's hyped about the Idris mission, but I'm I'm hyped for the one where you get to go in, take the lap code, and you know the one they showed off in Citizen Con. So excited for a new spawn point. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we get some new trade outposts too. Because sorry, yeah. all I do is trade. That's all I seem to really care about. But it keeps me it keeps me busy, anyways. Good. Yeah. All Got right. UEC coming. That's right. Yep. So. uh um, what, when do you usually stream? Do you have like a schedule? Um, so before it was around 8 PM, uh, Monday through Friday. And then Thursdays, I usually did the night crew show, uh, Sundays I did a scored cast, which is a podcast we do with, uh, my organization. But, um, uh, you know, with the times now, um, I've been trying to do daytime streaming, but I end up starting at 9 PM. I'll stream till four or five in the morning and then I'll go to bed at 6 AM. And then I wake up at like three, 4 PM in the afternoon. So there goes my daytime stream. So. Mostly nighttime. 
I would say I'm probably going to move my start time to 9 p.m. Because uh, I like hanging out with some people from the European side and Australian side, not just the EU side. I mean, uh, NA side. So I like I like the nighttime. I like being a night owl. I think night's better. And I mean, I say that because I've always streamed in the daytime and I see a lot mm -hmm. of things. I talked to WTF Asaurus about this as well because I met him in Vancouver. And he was saying that 6 a.m. is prime time for like the morning. And I missed that by an hour. It's like, man, if I was just to wake up an hour earlier. Yeah, and that's 9 a.m. Eastern, which makes sense. Yeah. It's like all I have to do is wake up an hour earlier and I'd probably do a lot better on my stream. But it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> my weakness. Yeah, but you're, you are in a tough bracket, man. That morning hour is where 90% of the, the people are doing it, you know? You think you're so? going up against like you. Yeah, you, Ver, uh, Nerd Show and Tell. Uh, Uber nerd, hey, what the fuck is Soros? You know, a lot, a lot of people do. Um, what I, I consider that time a prime time hour. You know, the, wow. the people are at work watching. You know, versus my, I like my nighttime one. Like, you know, uh, I talked to Jude about this because he streams out of Hawaii, which is six hours back. You know, so he hits this late night bracket where you're pulling people from different time zones, and there's not as much uh, traffic, but we're pulling in what is there. You know, none of the big guys like. Uh, you know, the ones I mentioned are doing the nighttime ones, which I like. Well, Uber Nerd uh, does go uh, late into the night, but, you know, good for him. Yeah. He does the morning and the night. But I, I like the nighttime hours. And people are a little more chill. You know, you don't get as many of the trolls in there. And um, as as bad as it's to say, you don't get a lot of the kids going in there and trying to queue up racist YouTube music or <laughs> uh, mess with you. You know, it's like a lot of the people there are just kind of hanging out or playing the game with you and just being chill. So. I like it. Late night with Henkin, you know. There you go. Yeah. All right, Henkin. Well, thanks so much for doing the show for me this week. You're very welcome, man. Yeah. Thanks gonna, for having me. I'm going to have uh, Dad Lando on the show next week, so uh, be sure to check in then. Of so course, then, man. Have a good week, everybody. Yeah, bye, everyone.